Right, so we're going to be talking about the bushcraft knife. As you can see, mine's on a carabiner, mounted on a bit of 550 paracord on the belt loop. I don't use my belt loop for one reason, that when I do sit down, it will dig into the ground and force it upwards, which is quite uncomfortable. Um, so this, when mounted on, will move with me. Um, important thing is the sheath. When this knife is not in use, it stays in the sheath. Um, it's one important thing to know. The next is always know where your knife is when not on your person. So if it's in your pack, know where it is. The next is know where it is if it's at home. Um, keep them safe and locked away from children and other adults. Um, the next point is I'll make a habit of teaching my students never to lend a knife. Um, it's the quickest way to make an enemy from a friend. You don't want it coming back looking like a saw. Um, so never lend, which is another important thing is that I never teach how to pass a knife because if you're out in the wilderness you should have your own knife and use that. So never pass a knife. When my students hand in their knives they're placed in the sheath on the desk so I can ha um, take them in. So other than that I never lend or pass a knife. So draw in the knife from the sheath. Always hold the sheath on the spine, never the belly where the stitching is. So this is done in two movements. First is to loosen the blade. The next is to take it out with care, not touching the belly of the sheath. So when handling the knife, well, you need to know that it's sharp for one because that means it's going to be safe and easy to use um, because you need to put, you put less pressure onto the object you're um, carving or cutting which means less accidents are bound to happen. So when you've got your knife and you're making cuts just anticipate where the knife will go. So take the kneeling position or if you are standing, just cut away from yourself and never cut towards yourself. So the first grip I'm going to show you is the forehand grip or the choke grip, which uh, I've heard it been called before. So you place onto the object and sharp powerful movements to sharpen a stick maybe if you're making a peg, like that. The next one we're going to show, I'm going to show you is called the chest lever grip. Um, this gives you quite a lot of power um, because you're using your back muscles um, and both arms are moving at the same time. So what we do, you can either have, hold it like this or like this. I've seen most people put their thumb on the blade but when you're cutting Sometimes your thumb can slip, so I like to keep my thumb on the back spine of the knife here. So when you're cutting, you cut up here, you've got a bird's eye view of your movements and where the blade's going. And you pull with this arm and this arm, which is using your back muscles. So, there, there. There. And you always look like what you're doing. Never get distracted. If you do, put the knife away and carry on what you're doing once the distraction's gone. So this is quite a good, powerful movement. The next one is using your knee. You use the fleshy part of your knee, place the blade in and pull with this arm and if your knife sharp it will make short and easy work of the task you've got so 
they're the most used um, cuts or methods I teach of cutting with the knife. The next thing is the push cut. Now this is done, you can hold the back of the knife or in the choke grip or the forehand grip, but all this movement is done with your thumb and maybe a flick of the wrist to get in to the wood. But all the power is done using your thumb. You need to go around, if the wood's a bit thick, go around a couple of times until you warm right into it. You can use this method if you haven't got a saw um, because it makes the stick easier to snap and you get a more clean cut just using your knife. I pull, keeping my fingers away from the spine, uh, from the belly, sorry. I place it in back the same way I take it out. I place it in and then push it down and then move it out of the way. So, it snaps easy. So that's the push bum technique. Right guys, the next technique um, is battening with your knife. This is if you haven't got an axe or um, any other splitting tool you take. My students normally uh, ask funny questions about this. Aren't you scared of getting your knife broken? Well if you've got a good knife it won't matter because it will withstand it. So place the blade on and you tap the edge of the blade that's out. As you can see, very effective in splitting. Show you that again. As you can see that could be more effective and um, a lot more safe than using an axe because you've got total control over what you're doing.